All right. Hello, everyone. Jen Keeler, Yoga Mama, coming at you from our online yoga studio. And today we're going to be doing a little bit of a gentle, very accessible all levels class to help open our hip flexors in the front of the pelvis. And about 30 minute class, what you'll need today is a block or two and also a blanket. So you might like to have any kind of blanket will be fine. Just fold it up so that when you're on your hands and knees, your knees have a resting space on it, particularly if you're on a hardwood floors. This isn't mandatory. It also creates a nice seat if you fold it up just to elevate your hips so that you have something to sit on. So any towel, any blanket. And if you don't have any blocks, what you can do is grab a chair and just use the front part of the chair to create a little bit of stability. And what blocks do is it helps extend our reach, helps create stability, provide a little bit of support without collapsing completely onto them. They can be a nice support for any kind of resting poses that you want to put your hands or hips or feet on. So um, I use these in Shavasana underneath my knees. So just a couple of blocks. It's a good investment. You can usually find them pretty affordable. And, um, and then of course a yoga mat as well. Okay, so let's get started. Okay. So let's go ahead and come into a comfortable seated position. And I'm going to go ahead and have a seat on my blanket. And what that does is it creates a little bit of elevation in my hips so that when I'm sitting down, I'm not feeling kind of rounded or slumpy. It just creates a little bit of a lift in my body. Go ahead and take your palms face down in your lap. Take a nice deep inhalation. And just a nice audible sigh, just letting go of all that tension. One more in-breath, one more exhale, and then just do that one more time, inhaling through the nose, and exhaling open mouth all the way out. Let your lips fall together at the end of the breath. And start to breathe normally, very deeply though. So we don't force the breath. We let the breath arrive in its own way. But we let our attention fall onto the breath. So you're following that breath all the way in the body and all the way out. And as you breathe, you're going to notice a natural pause at the end of each inhalation and at the end of each exhalation. It's this natural, very untruncated space that swings us into the next part of the breath. And we start with this breath when there's a really lovely time for gestation and quiet and beginning fresh. But tuning inward is a really important part of this process. And the breath helps us begin that journey of presence and calming the nervous system. So following the breath all the way in, noticing that gentle cascading pause that comes right over into the exhale and all the way down the exhale and that gentle pause before in breath. So you might visualize a circle you might visualize that breath like a swing set. So the in-breath coming up one side, that gentle pause at the top, and then the exhale coming back around. So this diaphragmatic breathing that we're doing helps the parasympathetic nervous system come into dominance and decreases the stress response in our body. The breath is smooth and deep pretty much equal in length on both inhalation and exhale, as well as those gentle pauses. And the breath is continuous, and the breath can serve as a resource for us in this practice. We'll talk more about the breath in future practices. But for now, just let yourself use the breath as a compass for your attention. And if your mind wanders off of the breath, just very compassionately and gently open into that breath. Taking a few more quiet moments, just letting this be abundant in your attention, letting this be enough. But being kind if your mind wanders and creating the invitation for the space to return. 
So the first week in January is often filled with resolutions or hopes for the future. And it is in somewhat of a contrast to the natural world, which is very quiet at this time. So this is a really great time, as I said earlier, for gestation, nourishment of the inner world that you have, and also an opportunity to surrender the things that are no longer serving you. So in that way, a resolution can be very powerful as long as it's met with intention and less focused on external goals. So as you're sitting here and breathing in your nice calm breath, you might consider without rumination, just what you might be prepared to let go of in this new year. So patterns of physical discomfort, maybe pain, patterns of holding, or mental and emotional challenges. Maybe you have a conflict with your partner, husband and wife, whatever that looks like, or a friend, or saying yes to too many things, or perfectionism, tension, rumination, whatever it is that's no longer serving you. And focus on surrendering that on each out-breath. Let the out-breath be a surrender, a letting go, a relinquishing your grip on your pain or discomfort. And feel the spaciousness that that can create. Imagining if you do surrender that, what that would look like in your life. And you don't need to find anything else at this point. Maybe your practice will just be aware of this sense of surrender in all of our movement and of all of our intention in the next 30 minutes or so. But there might be also something that you're interested in opening up to. So as you let go of perfectionism, you might open into presence. Or you let go of resentment and you might open into acceptance. And in yoga, there's a sutra, a verse in the text, one of the scriptures of yoga, that says, Vitarka Bhadane Pratipaksha Bhavanam. And that simply means inviting in the opposite. The Pratipaksha Bhavanam is the practice of the opposite. So something that's going to provide nourishment and focus your attention on a new direction. So breathing in, opening into new possibility and breathing out, surrendering that which no longer serves you. And we're gonna let both the breath and this intention serve as a compass. Don't worry if you didn't come up with anything, just let this beautiful breath be your compass for practice today as we begin to link movement and breath. So very gently, take your hands curled over the knees, inhale, open the heart, and as you exhale, curl and round the chest. Deepen that breath again. Let the in-breath pull you forward, opening the chest, squeezing the shoulders, and as you exhale, rolling back. And now we're going to take circles. So as you inhale, come forward, but exhale, twist your ribs over to the side, and inhale back up the opposite side, and re release that direction, just coming round and round. And then after your next inhale, go ahead and press into the sits bones, long spine. And as you exhale, you can walk your hands out in front of your body. I'm going to switch so you can see me a little better. And then find a pausing place where you feel that gentle stretch, push into the heels slightly and very gently sway from side to side. Maybe walk your hands over to the side. Over to the other side, let your neck be in a nice neutral position. And some of you can go deeper, I know you can fold a little more deeper. And then folding forward. And push into the earth, rising up, take your hands behind you. Fingertips can be forward or off to the side. And again, if you need blocks, you can go ahead and take some blocks to help support your hands if that feels good. Opening the chest, now squeeze those elbows back. You can let the neck release open, but reach through the crown so you're not collapsing completely. One more deep breath here. 
and exhaling coming forward. Go ahead and switch the front leg. If you're in cross-legged, this is also easily done on your knees. Hands curl. We're just going to start those circles right away, starting in the opposite direction. Exhaling to one side and rounding up the other. And reversing that direction just a couple of times. And remember to loosen the neck too. So I won't always be doing what you're doing. I'm just a general guide. You can always go gentler or more strongly. And then the next inhalation, coming forward, press into the heels and the sits bones and fold until you've got that nice resistance in the hips and then a gentle swaying side to side. And your neck is very neutral. You're not feeling effort in the back or the front. And you're feeling that breath traveling freely there. Just a couple more breaths. Second side tends to be a little tighter. And then coming into center, one more breath right in the center. And push into the earth, rising up. Take the fingers behind you and stretch the heart open again. Again, activate those feet a little bit. Press the hands in, open across the heart. One more deep breath. And then as you're ready, go ahead and come out of the pose. Okay, so in the last few minutes, my dog decided to come and join me. So she'll be here on a different video, but right now we're just going to get our first one of the year complete. So Okay, so from this position, you can go ahead and shift back. Take your knees over to the side. Get rid of that. So knees are over to your left side, pointing to the left. Go ahead and straddle those knees. And as you inhale, lift the heart open, leaning into that thigh. And as you exhale, round back, you can even free those hands. And just start to move the body with the breath one more time, surrendering when you feel that tension. Hip flexors tend to hold a lot of that tension on your next inhale. Stay nice and long. Plant that left hand, extend the right hand down, and let your forehead come down towards the earth, or go ahead and rest it on a block. This grounds the mind. So this is a nice calming practice in that stretch. You can reach and press with that back hand to get a little twist action. Lay the belly onto the thigh. Take one more deep breath. And then slowly side the hand back up. Let's plant it onto the kneecap. Inhale. And then as you exhale, go ahead and reach behind you. And exhale. So as you exhale, you want to think about wringing out the spine and all of the fascial tissue and the organs and the belly. Gently unwinding on the inhale and letting the exhale ring it out. So uh, twists are really detoxifying and support that intention on a physical level of letting things go. Last exhale, go ahead and wind through your seat. I'm going to come over onto the other side. So straddling that right kneecap now, inhaling, opening the heart. Exhale, tuck the pelvis and round back. And you can even do bigger circles. One of my teachers called this a dolphin flow movement. I like to think about that moving through the ocean in that way. Just very circular, getting all of that, uh, what we call prana, moving through the body. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, stretch the left hand now, planting that right hand back. Forehead to floor or forehead to block and just extend through the body. Nice, deep, delicious breathing. And then sliding back up, planting hand to knee, back hand reaches around, inhale, long spine, and then as you exhale, look behind you, gazing and twisting. Each inhale, a lengthening, each exhale, a ringing out. So we even cultivate those opposites in our body in marriage with the breath. Ringing out that tension, impatience opening into compassion, acceptance, whatever your mantra is for the moment. And gently unwind out of the pose. We're going to go ahead and come on to hands and knees. Okay. 
So you'll take your blanket and make sure that it's underneath your knees. So you have padding to spread my blanket out. Take your knees under your hips, a little bit wider than hip distance apart, and spread your fingers out on the mat. I'm just going to leave my blocks out here for me to use at a little bit different time. Go ahead and do a little cat cow here. So the in breath opens the front, the exhale rounds and tucks. And liberate that movement, pushing the ribs over to the right side, rounding up, inhale belly through center, lift the gaze, and as you exhale, round belly through other side. Just like doing figure eights with the torso. One more breath. And go ahead and take your knees a little bit wider, stretching back onto the heels. So if this doesn't feel good, you can tuck your toes, you can drop your elbows and stay right there. But just sinking back as far as possible and then stretching those arms forward. Sweet. If your head doesn't reach the ground, go ahead and ground your head on a block and gently roll the forehead out onto the earth or the block. It's just a way to massage the mind. This is a really grounding pose. This is that screen that we tend to, where we ruminate. We tend to roll things over and over, just rolling out that tension in the forehead, finding stillness in the middle. Go ahead and reach through the left arm, walking the hands over towards the right. Let your forehead come down onto the forearm and stretch. Now breathe as if you're breathing along the left side body, inhaling, reaching up to the fingertips. And as you exhale, imagine that breath traveling all the way down to the root. And walk your hands through center and over to the other side now. Let your forehead rest onto the forearm and stretch, breathing up to the right fingertips. And the exhale, taking it all the way down to the root. One last breath here. All right, then we're going to come on to hands and knees. So a few things, if down dog doesn't work for your body right now, if you're tired or you have injury or just doesn't make sense, there are a couple different options for you. The first one is called down puppy, where you stretch your hands forward, melt the heart, and you still have that same sensation of length in the upper body. So you're not getting a stretch in the legs, but that's okay. It's not a mandatory thing. This is the primary intention of down dog. The other option is to drop the elbows down onto the earth. Sorry about that. You can anchor the fingers to the elbows to see how far your elbows need to be and round the forearms onto the earth or you can just come into down dog. So when you come into down dog, let me get situated here, I've got a microphone strapped to my back. All right. When you come into down dog, spread the hands out on the earth and you'll just tuck the feet under and you'll notice that my hands and hips, my hands to my hips is a nice long straight line, but my knees are somewhat bent and my heels are off the floor. My body just will not let my heels sink to the floor. I don't need to worry about that. The primary intention here is a nice long stretch. And then you can go ahead and walk out your feet, creating a little more flexibility. And then very slowly just start to walk your feet forward on the mat, keep your gaze at your feet. And we're gonna come into a hanging forward bend. Your knees should be as soft as you need it to be to feel that stretch in both the back of the legs and the low back and the upper back. So my legs will be quite bent. I have very tight hamstrings as a general rule. Even as somebody who does it all the time, I wanna balance that stretch sensation in the body. So just taking a couple breaths here, let go of the neck and breathe deeply. So find the center of your feet. You wanna rock your body forward, rock it back, and see if you can get your feet right in the center, front to back, left to right. Spread those toes out on the earth and press into the feet, rolling up. Reach those arms up and over. I'm gonna to rotate towards you, but you can stay facing the front. Grab hold of that right wrist, shoulders drop, and press into the right foot as you lean creating a nice stretch. You can relax that ear to the shoulder. Breathe deep. Now really reach that arm and lift the pelvis. So as you press into the earth, you get a lot of integrity in the core. 
Inhale through center, exhale other side. Relaxing the air, breathe now along that left side body. Press into the left foot, really reaching up, but the shoulders are relaxed, head relaxes. One more breath. And inhale up, exhale, bring hands to heart. So pressing your feet into the earth, you wanna drop those shoulders back, roll them back, be comfortable, press into the feet. And what we're thinking about in this pose is we wanna really have strong pose. This is a nice standing posture, lifting the pelvis just a little bit so we're not sway back, pulling that belly in, squeezing just very gently, non-aggressively. Shoulders are relaxed, feet are strong on the earth, and hands to the heart. So go ahead and get there. You want to bring your blocks. If you're going to use your blocks, particularly if you can't touch the floor without um, strain. So we're going to use the blocks, have them available. I'm going to have mine on the lower horizontal height. And bring them out in front of your body. Inhale, sweep the arms up. And as you exhale, lift the pelvic floor slightly and fold swan dive down towards the earth or your blocks. And as you inhale, take halfway up, inhale. Exhale, fold, we're gonna fly back up to sky. We're just kind of warming up the body. This is called a sun salutation warm up. Exhale, hands through heart center. Inhale, sweep. Exhale, fold. Inhale, hands to shins, halfway up or flat on the blocks. Exhale, fold. And then one more inhale, sweeping up. Exhale through heart and take one more sweep. Inhale, reach, a little bit of a back bend, gazing up. Exhale, swan dive down. And hands to the shins. Exhale, fold. Go ahead and walk your feet together and step the right foot back on the mat. So this is where we're gonna work with those blocks a little bit. This is a foundational lunge position. Reach through the crown and the back of the foot, the center of the back of the foot. So you wanna not be super passive here. We wanna think about energy, pressing that foot away, reaching the crown away from that. So that if I were to remove my hands off the block, I would still have quite a bit of integrity in my root pose. So this breathing as if you're breathing to the crown of the head, reaching through the sole of the foot, taking a couple breaths there to establish this deep, strong lunge. This is your foundation for all practices coming forward. So inhale, we're gonna melt the heart open, just a whisper, knees still over the ankle. And as I exhale, I'm just gonna straighten my leg to resistance. So as I in breath, I'm gonna let the breath draw my heart forward. And as I exhale, I'm gonna press the hips back, head towards knee. So you'll notice I don't fully extend that left leg. It's because I have a nice, lovely old injury that likes to uh, create some limitation. So I meet that limitation wherever it is each day. And I gently nudge it into healing and growth without stressing it out. So go ahead and drop that back knee now. Press with the same energy. You can untuck the toes. If your feet are crampy, you can keep the toes tucked. Press that right foot back. Inhale, reach the heart up and let your gaze lift off the horizontal line. So as you exhale, let's go ahead and take the arms into cactus. Pause there. Breathe deep. Drop those shoulder blades down and then hitch the thumbs even more, pressing into that earth. Okay, so you want to make sure that you're really pressing into that back leg. You can collapse forward, but lots of energy. One more breath. Exhale, hands forward. We're going to plant them on the earth. Step back into down dog. And take three breaths here. Now, depending on your energy today, I know we're taking it really slow today, but you might prefer to come right onto your belly. So otherwise, squeeze the legs together and press your body into plank pose. Same thing applies. You can do forearms if you want. You can also choose fists, or you can drop your knees down. You just wanna find a nice, deep, long breath, reaching through the crown of the head. Heart isn't collapsed or rounded. Couple breaths there. One more breath, squeezing to center, and then as you lower down, just drop your knees. Hands can come onto the earth, and then turn a cheek to floor. Okay. As you inhale, press the tops of the feet down and the pubic bone down. That creates a nice, secure brace. Inhale, 
And as you exhale, take another cheek to floor, opposite side, and just gently come out of low cobra. You'll notice we're not going into that full up dog, maybe a little bit of augmentation, exhaling back and forth. Reaching through the crown of the head and not the face or the chin. In and out, you're welcome to come in and hold the position or continue to oscillate. You can also rest with your forehead on your, your um, forearms. One more breath. And exhale. Go ahead and bring your forehead to your forearms. And relax everything and just shake out your booty. Nice deep breathing. Feel the relaxation and the energy moving a little bit differently now. And bring the hands under the shoulders. We're going to find our way back to down dog. So take your time. You can press up and through tabletop pose. You can tuck the toes. I'm going to figure out my new arrangement here with my microphone. It's pulling my pants down and lifting my shirt up. Two problems. Okay, go ahead and find your way back into down dog. Bring your feet together at the back of the mat. Take that right foot forward in between the hands. We're going to start that second series, second side lunge all over again. So reaching from the crown of the head to the sole of the left foot this time. Spread those right toes out on the earth and you're going to see that my knee is right over the ankle joint. So you really want to make sure that your back heel is never lifted or way forward. We're trying to create stability in our joints and strength in the muscles that create that stability and build bone density by loading appropriately. So in breath, heart forward, exhale, fold, stretching, head towards knee. You can be light in the toes as you do that exhale and just gently coming back and forth. Remember, you're not collapsing on those hands. This is just for stability. So you can feel that root foundation for all future lunges there. One more breath, and then dropping that back knee down. Inhale, reaching the arms up, and breathing. So lots of energy in that root leg, feeling the hips coming forward. Notice that back knees back behind my left hip. Exhale into cactus, and then continue to open. Squeezing the shoulder blades, and exhale, hands down. So now we're gonna change our position, tuck the back toes, and go ahead and bring the hands around to center. So feet are either parallel or toes can be turned slightly out. Hands are underneath my shoulders. Inhale, long spine, and I'm just going to gently fold. So if you feel stress there, inhale, go ahead and lengthen. Exhale, fold. But you can walk your feet closer together as you need. Each in-breath lifting, extend through tailbone and crown. Each exhale, fold. So we're going to stay in that uh, position, I'm just adjusting my feet here as I adjust to this new mat. It's a little slippery. I'm going to exhale that left knee and bend into an extension. So you'll see my right foot still grounded. Big stretch across the inner thigh. Inhale through center and then exhale other side. And I'm going to let the breath lead me in this movement as well. And you'll notice I move my hands to whatever makes most sense for my body. Sometimes I need that support over on the side. And if there's one side that doesn't feel good, just go ahead and uh, linger there for a moment. If one side feels tighter, we're not always symmetrical. One more breath into the center. Go ahead and turn your heels in. We're just going to bend those knees and rise on up to vertical. Okay, so let's just take some good hip circles. Just letting your hips come around to the left side opening back and up through the front side. So a little bit of a back bend across the pelvis when you come across. Let's reverse that direction, going all the way around, drawing a nice big circle with our tailbone. And you can do this, you can pause this and do this for some time, or you can, you can stay with this. All right, so I forgot to mention, please always hydrate during your practice. My room is super toasty down here. So we're gonna 
We're gonna enjoy that warmth in these cold winter days. Okay, so toes turn out. You wanna make sure you're not gonna collapse to the instep. So toes turn wide enough and you feel that same pressure on the center of your feet. Inhale, reaching up, sweeping those arms up and as you exhale, go ahead and land in goddess pose. Okay, so I go kind of deep in this position. Some of you will like to sink really far down. We're just going to take a couple breaths here, breathing into the strength of this position. Three full breaths. Inhale. Let's exhale. Sigh. Two more. Smooth it out all the way out. Last in breath. And exhale. Float the arms down. And go ahead and lock the hands onto the thighs. So this is creating a nice... Um, kind of not even working too hard to have uh, to have my, my legs wide and my arms are somewhat locked here. So if that's not comfortable for you, you can keep your elbows bent, just a little more effort. Otherwise lock and let your shoulders shrug up and then push vertical so you have integrity there. Okay, so from this position, inhale, long spine, exhale, drop the left shoulder forward, looking over the left right side and take some deep breaths right into the heart center, feeling that lovely stretch letting go of what no longer serves you in the body, all of that mental tension, and inhale through center, exhale other side. And relaxing on that side too, pressing into the twist, nice deep breath, inhale, long exhale through the nose, and back into center. One more breath. And then taking the hands down towards the earth. Turn the toes forward. We're going to take our hands for a walk behind us. Stretching towards the other side of the mat. And softening your knees as much as you need to. So make this pose comfortable. You want to make sure that it feels like a good stretch. And then it's not pushing you into any extremes. One last breath. Long exhale. And then bring the hands under the shoulders. I'm going to walk our hands towards the front of the mat. Step forward on the mat into hanging forward bend. Spread those toes out. Go ahead and cross the arms, grabbing opposite elbows. Let the elbows draw you down and the forehead come into forearms. And pressing into the center of your feet. We have a tendency to rock back. So let your weight shift forward until you find that center. Let your head Forehead go towards the forearms. Oh, and just let it feel so good. One last breath. Release the hands down. Inhale, press into the feet. Sweep to the sky, palms together. Exhale once more into that standing pose. Variation of mountain pose called samastitihi. Center of feet, gentle lift in the pelvis. Back ahead reaches back and up. So we have a tendency now to stand head forward, I do the same thing. So my work is to pull the head back and reach through the crown of the head. And once you're here at the top of the mat, I'm going to shift so you can see me. We're going to come into what's called dancer pose, a nice gentle variation of that. So stepping feet together, we're going to shift our weight onto the left foot. Start with the right hand and then left hand on top. I'm going to take that left leg into hand, bring the ankle up to the hand, thighs together. So we want to keep the thighs together in this pose. There's a tendency to open to the side and that's escaping out of that nice intense stretch across the front. So I'm going to show you this from the side because our tendency is to be folded out a little bit. Let's open up, pressing into the heel and lifting the pelvis up and forward. Lifting that left arm up, sorry, right arm up, you can take your hands into that okay sign called Gyana Mudra, and maybe you don't go very deep. Maybe you just stay here finding steadiness. So it helps to have, should have said this before, that drishti gaze, nice deep breathing. Smooth out that breath, find that compass breath one more time. Full, smooth, deep inhalations and exhalations. Balanced breath. One more breath. And then exhale, hands to heart feet together, close your eyes, feel in the body how things are shifting, notice a difference in weight and density and temperature. Take left hand to heart, right hand, I'm sorry, right hand to heart, left hand on top. We're going to go ahead and shift the opposite leg 
into the other hand, go ahead and press the pelvis forward and find steadiness. So sometimes old injuries were usually easier on one side than the other. I have an old ankle injury that likes to keep me a little on my toes here. Thighs together, opening up, reaching that other arm forward. Okay. Whoop. And then deepening the pose, but keeping the inner thighs on that center line. Nice smooth breaths, steadiness in breath, steadiness in gaze, just this lightness in the heart. One more breath, and exhale with control, feet together, hands to heart. And let's take our feet back towards the blanket, turn the toes out. So I like to bring my heels on a blanket when I'm coming down into one of my first squats of the day. You also might like, depending on your knee situation, you might like to have a block available to sit on. I'll show you that in just a moment. Otherwise, toes turn out and spread out. So we're at the edge of the mat with our feet. Inhale, sweep up, palms together. Exhale, draw the hands through the heart, pulling the navel in as you come down. We're going to exhale and let the hands come down onto the mat. So my upper arms are in between my kneecaps. And I'm going to ground my hands so my feet can fully relax. So if you don't have as much flexibility in hips or feet, sometimes your feet are working really hard. Just anchor those hands. And you can either let your chin bow forward in this kind of passive squat or bring the hands to heart and really lift the crown up. Relax those feet, breathe, and take full breaths, completely relaxing your pelvic floor now. Just let the full breath come all the way down into the pelvis and full release. In and out, exhaling tension, opening into possibility. Okay, we're gonna come on to our booties. So slowly coming down, go ahead and bring the soles of feet together into cobbler pose. Wrap the hands around the feet or the shins if that's more accessible to you. Inhale, press into the sits bones, long spine, and exhale, fold. So we want, we want to avoid rounding forward. Just keep your spine nice and long, neck neutral. And again, when you reach that end range here, just let your neck relax and breathe. We want to lean into growing and pushing our body into the place, but we never want to force it. Our body just rebounds if we push too hard, kind of goes into a panic place. So nice deep breathing here. One last breath. Okay, and we're gonna come on to our backs. So what I like to do is take my blanket out so it is on one part of my mat where I'm gonna be laying down. I actually don't need a blanket for this part of the practice. I'm on a carpeted floor. It's pretty, pretty cush here. Okay, and I'm gonna take my microphone off so I can lay down on my back and you're gonna to wanna to have a block with you. So we'll come from this position into relaxation. So if you want to um, have a block or bring your socks or a sweater or a blanket, go ahead and make sure that you have that available. Just taking off my little microphone here. I'm gonna pull it off to the right side, I think. Okay, so I'm gonna lay down this direction and have my block handy. I'm gonna go ahead and lay down, bring my knees into my chest just to flatten my low back out on the floor. This feels really good. I'm just gonna hold on to that right knee and slide my left leg all the way down on the mat. So squeezing in that knee, pulling it in towards the chest, and really trying to step on the other wall with that extended leg. So breathing, opening the knee just a little bit, and as you exhale, squeeze the knee in. And you can activate that foot or pacify it. It's whatever's gonna feel good. And just be present to the sensations. And also breathing along this side of the body, feeling that nice extension. Go ahead and let the knee come out to the side. That right knee's gonna shift and I'm gonna keep extending through the extended leg. Lift and dip to lubricate the hip joint. And then bringing the knee back through center. I'm gonna take this knee 
and just pull it over towards the left a little bit. So it's a real gentle stretch, mostly getting into the hip tissues. And I'm going to take my right hand, I don't know if you can see it, but I am actually, I'm going to roll a little bit more so you can see, I am giving my booty some wonderful love. So you want to go ahead and rub that tissue. A lot of times we're taught to feel shame about our bottoms if they're big or you know, don't look like a supermodel. So just take this time to express gratitude for these really hardworking muscles and the uniqueness that is your own body. I'm bringing the knees back and through center, flatten the back, go ahead and extend, taking a good morning stretch, rolling wrists and ankles, articulating and flexing, extending fingers and toes. And then as you exhale, take the left knee into chest and stretching that extended leg again, really breathing deeply into that stretch. And let that sensation of softness starting to pervade as we slow things down again, bring that knee over to the side, opening, still extending through the, the long leg, keeping the back flat on the ground. And then as you uh, bring the knee back through center over towards that right side, same thing, just a gentle twist so that we're just getting a little bit of a tissue stretch there in our hips and then giving that left butt cheek, oops, microphone falling, a little bit of love so that it doesn't get jealous of all the attention you gave to the other side. All right, and coming back through center, go ahead and bend both knees. Let's squeeze the knees just to get alignment here. And we're gonna come into a passive bridge pose. So if you want, you can come into a more active bridge pose that has the hips lifted. Some of you can go ahead and clasp your hands, or you can also bring a block flat underneath your sacrum. So getting situated so that your back feels really good here on the block, making any adjustments you need to. And you can either rest here. This is a really nice restorative position. Or you can extend that left leg down onto the floor and you'll feel a gentle stretch in the hip flexor right here. This is iliopsoas connection into the hamstring, just the front of the pelvis and the front inside of the pelvis. So some of you won't feel a dramatic stretch. Some of us feel a lot of stretch, especially if you're a runner, or you sit a lot in a chair. So this might be enough. You can always come back to that original position. We'll go ahead and bring that right knee into chest and deepen that sensation, just like we did earlier and breathe deep into that. And see if you can draw the energy of the breath down into the pelvis. So obviously those lungs don't reach all the way down there, but the prana, the intention of moving that energy qualities of the breath into the tissues is very beneficial. Opening into that light and surrendering the tension. One more breath. And then bringing the foot down, go ahead and step both legs, bent, recalibrate, and extend that right leg down on the floor now, feeling your hip flexors, maybe this is where you stay, or you can go ahead and squeeze the left knee into chest. And breathe smoothly. We're starting to wind things down now, so the mind is less active. And it's really just about that gentle sensation of breath on the tissues. And that inner smile. And go ahead and plant both feet bent knees, lift the hips off of the block and slowly roll down. Walk the feet to the edges of the mat, left and right edges. And we're gonna take our arms into cactus. Flatten things out, inhale, and as you exhale, let the knees drift over to the left side, pressing into the feet. So stretching one last time through the pelvis in this gentle twist, inhale through center and the exhales take you to the side. Oscillating back and forth. See if you can breathe that still complete breath, deep and nourishing and even. And come back through center. This is our last posture of the day. Go ahead and squeeze the knees into shoulders, flattening the low back onto the floor. 
I'm just feeling that release. You can stay here, or if you'd like to come into happy baby, as we finish a lot of practices this way, squeezing the low back down, relaxing the pelvis one last time. And then releasing the legs down. So traditional corpse pose called Shavasana is um, flat on the back. Legs are a little bit wider than hip distance apart. Toes turn out and the palms face up. Arms about six inches from the torso. So some people don't find this very comfortable. I'm actually one of those people with low back challenges. So I like to take my blocks and bring them underneath my thighs just above the knees. And it creates a little resting spot and a place for my low back to sink into the earth. And then this feels much more comfortable for me. Take a nice deep in breath through your nose and out breath. And wiggle out any adjustments. And we'll start with our attention on the breath and we're just gonna watch that breath begin to get quiet. Relaxing the eyes and the tongue into the back of the mouth and feeling that gravitational pull of the earth beneath us. And one last time, this is a great opportunity to just take your practice into release. And this idea of opening into that positive attribute you're hoping to cultivate, the compassion or patience, whatever that quality is, the bhavanam, and surrendering that tension around the issue that may be challenging you. And if the mind wanders, just gently come back to this very quiet breath now. And release. And as you're ready to begin awakening, just deepen your breath, maybe wiggle fingers and toes, and just bring to mind that intention one last time, anchoring to the intent of opening into your possibility and letting go of the thing that no longer serves you, and letting this be a foundation for your practice off the mat, and those interactions with difficult situations, people, in those moments where you uh, ruminate over your pain or difficulty and see if you can let that go. Just that commitment to your practice. So go ahead and bend the knees. Roll over onto your right side if that's comfortable or you can come onto your left side. Cradling the head just for a moment. And pushing yourself up to seat it. Oh, my microphone is pulling me. And you can take your blanket back underneath your bottom and to cross a good position. One last moment to check in here. Go ahead and bring hands to heart center, bow the chin towards the chest. And thank you for taking the time to practice today. I hope you um, have a wonderful rest of your day. Namaste. Okay, so in the last few minutes, we had a surprise guest show up. This is Callie. She's going to help us with the rest of our practice. Okay, so from this position, go ahead and take your knees. Maybe she's not going to help us. Hi, sweetie. <laughs> You're my good girl. Okay, yes, I see you. Does this need to be visiting time? I see. She's a love. And she loves it when we do yoga together. But this is not going to work out very well. Okay? 
You're my darling, and I love you. You have to go. Can you go upstairs? All right, come on, let's go. <laughs>